Now, aside of Bull Bull, this is probably your first time seeing any Orlando Magic highlights. Granted, any Franz Wagner highlights. But that's not the point. I'm just trying to show y'all some things, how you could learn from some of Franz Wagner's mistakes to maybe improve your basketball IQ and maybe to improve your performance as a player. And so in this Toronto Raptors game, Franz didn't have a good game. He had ended up with like nine points, three turnovers. They was down by like 25 at some point. And so by seeing bad games like this, that means there's a lot of ways to get better because the best ways to get better are the things you did wrong. And if you played bad, you did a lot of things wrong. And so let's get straight into these clips. But before we do, make sure you subscribe, you like, turn on those notifications, posting every day. If I miss a day, it'll only be one day out the week. So we post at least six days out the week. Make sure you follow on all socials at Pat DOR, same handles, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all that. And let's get straight to it. And so out the gate, out the gate, Toronto is a re really good defensive team. So they want to set, they want to set their, they want to set the tone on the defensive side of the ball. And so by, with this Orlando team, they like to run a lot of things through their wings. So through Franz, through Paulo, through Bull at times. And so being a bigger player, you want you're gonna want to test as a defender. You're gonna want to test the waters how you can guard them. You're gonna want to try to get up into them, see if you can pressure them, see if you could that you can make them uncomfortable. And that's what Scotty was doing. OG and Anobi, Pascal, they're all doing that from the from the jump of the game. That was probably one of the the key points that that they entered this game with. And so if you're Franz here, if you're Franz here, you got You gotta you gotta bring it set set the tone right back. You gotta come right back at him. Instead of trying to catch the ball all the way out here and letting him come up and press you, get underneath you, you've got to get the catch the ball, be more physical before the catch, and be and let him know I'm here too. I'm here to set the tone just like you are. I'm not I'm not I'm not backing down from your pressure. I'm not gonna let you get underneath me. You gotta set the tone from the start. And that's one thing that Franz hasn't been able to do so well, is being able to be physical and being able to handle pressure. It's probably it's probably a little weird. He's six eight, six nine. Probably never played that lead guard position, and so it's getting, it takes some getting used to. But ma fixing mistakes like this is where he's going to be be led in the right direction. So you don't need to initiate the offense all the way out here near half court. You don't need it. Like you got to set the tone. Get get a little get a little deeper. Let them know that you're there too. Ends up being all the way at half court. Took a dribble backwards because of the pressure. Now just watch, Franz. And it'll be down here. Now you're going to see this with a lot of young teams. With a lot of young teams, you're going to see them loot little lapses, like these bad lapses on defense, like losing track of a player who fell out of bounds. It shouldn't happen. You're going to see that with a lot of, a lot of these young teams. But it's, it's just they, little, little plays like this shouldn't happen. Help over. You just forgot a dude went all the way out of bounds. And it's not even on Franz. Maybe more so it's just counting numbers and realizing who's still in the play, who's not in the play. OG just walked right back in bounds and got an easy two. All right, so now on that screen, on that screen, Franz has to do a better job of angling that back screen because he, see, he sees his brother, uh, Mo coming from that left side of him. And so he's setting that screen and giving space for the defender to get back over over that left shoulder. But he has to angle himself so that he can't try to go over back to the direction where his teammate, his brother, is trying to go to. And so if you notice here. Uh, let me go back right quick. Right here, he sets it back directly to the baseline. You want to angle this screen so that he can't even try to recover. So that he's that once you get once you finish the screen off. He's gonna be behind you, and now he he, he gets back into play. But it, had he had he angled the screen better, he would have had um, 35 right here. He would have had him sealed and been able to get this board right here. That would be right here because he's on his backside, and then who's that? Scotty. Scotty would have been on the other side of the rim, so that would have been his easy board and and an off offensive uh, and, and a putback. So make sure you always set in those screens at the right angle. Wherever you want your want your teammate to go, that's where you put your back to. Sometimes their offense starts as soon as the ball is shot. Now right here. 
see this right here you see there's a there's a gap over here on this side because there's no help over here pascal's only help but you could put a lot of pressure on pascal and really make yourself a threat right here if you just slowed this down and sealed van vliet because so, then pascal will notice that van vliet is in a trailing position he and he's at at his mercy at this point he can't really do much and so pascal's gonna have to make the decision do i want to help on franz who's who can have this easy layup right here and leave leave Bull Bull, who's right here in this right corner, wide open for a three? Or do I just want to see see how that plays out and try to give him a late contest or whatever that, that may be? And so if he just slows down just a little bit on this curl, if he just slows down, seals him, seals Van Vliet right here, you'll put a lot of pressure on Pascal to make a decision. Do you want to commit here or you want to commit to this corner? Same thing I was telling y'all before. Every time he's trying to get somewhere, every time he tries to get somewhere, it's, it's without physicality. He starts over here in this right corner. He doesn't. When you run off screens off the ball, when you're running off screens off the ball, you always want to make sure you take a step in so you can bump and then get out and create that angle and get that tight angle off the off ball screen. But if you don't, it's going to be a lot easier for the defender to get find that space and gap over the top of that screen, continue to chase you, and get back in position. And so now, all he literally has to do before to get, taking this screen is literally taking about two steps in, nudging with that shoulder a little bit, and running off that screen. And then you'll have enough space and maybe you have a, be able to get some real action right here. And Mo could, Mo could even slip this right here too. Mo could even slip this right here. If Houston was a little pushed down a little more corner, Mo would be able to slip this and have a two on one on this side. And or if he gets middle, has a has a corner over here. But it's just options. And even even on the rest of this, it's like he's trying to just get around him. He's not taking it to his body. He's just trying to go around another another wide angle. You got to be physical. Got to be a little more physical. Whether it's off the ball, on the ball, all that stuff. All right, so right here, I think this is Chris Boucher or something, but in transition right here, at this point, right there, you saw that you turned a little bit. You could have seen this. Should have been able to peep this mismatch. Realize that that's Cole on Ananobi. And so instead of just guarding, guarding in a drop right here because you don't want to guard him on the perimeter, you could even bait this post-up catch. So instead of playing this middle, you play a little more baseline. You shade it, just bait him. You don't have to commit all the way because then he has open drive middle. But just bait him a little bit so then he doesn't he doesn't want to throw this pass because it's Cole. But now on the other side, Cole has to do a better job of forcing to his help, which is Franz right here. Franz right here on this top side. Because now if you see him, he's opened up to the baseline. He's guard. He's playing him like his regular defense, and he, and he can't be doing. He can't do that in this situation right here because you're in, you're the you're the mismatch. You're a smaller player. He's just going to take it to your body, get to the rim. He ends up scoring this one too. So you got to realize where your next level of help is going to come from. So even if the principles of defense is going to be, oh, keep him, keep him out the middle. If your help is not um, on the baseline, don't force him to the baseline. Force him to the middle where your help is. Now, in this position, it'll be easy to get open two right here. It'll be easy to get the open two. Because now, at this point in the game, he ain't shoot no jumpers. He's yet to shoot any jumpers. And so he doesn't really have a rhythm for the three. So what's the percentage of him hit, hitting this shot? 35%. Whereas if he got this two, it's probably like a 90% chance. Where if he just cut right here, he got the 95% chance he's going to hit this two. So it's just about playing the numbers. And a lot of people say... A lot of people want to say, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a three-point shooter's game. It's a wide-open three. The three is a 40% shot for really good shooters. 40%. But if you could get a two that you could hit open for 80%, 90%, 100%, or 99%, why not take the two? I don't care that it's a three. It's a shooter's league nowadays. Take the, take, I'm taking the two every time. I don't, it's it's a one-point difference. 
unless your suit unless you got it going you got it flowing then you could take the three maybe or if like you're Steph or something but if you got if you got a chance to get the wide open two or wide open three I'm taking the wide open two and I I don't care, care about the numbers the statistics the, the the analytics forget forget all that stuff I don't care about it don't care I'm just trying to put points up on the board and win the game Now you notice how he picked up Thaddeus Young in transition. He had Thaddeus Young in transition. Ended up losing him. Let me turn this down a little bit. He had Young right here. He did. He tries to make a play on this on this pass, and then he ends up doing a whole 360. This whole 360 take, just takes him out the whole position. You got to make sure that at all times you're able to see not only your your defender. Or the player you're guarding, but also the ball, and so by doing by turning your whole body towards the ball, you're gonna lose sight of your defender because now he's all the way on your backside. You don't know where he could have went to, and so right here on Franz, he just needs to drop back. He doesn't need to do a whole spin. He just needs to drop back, and he can't assume that that is going to keep cutting because now that mess that messes him messes up messes him up. Rather, he should just drop back, dig on this, be Houston's help. And so that now you would be able to prevent that too. And now instead of being in this position where you're trying to look for your the person you're guarding, now you're in this position and you're preventing the two from from happening. So you got to be more physical and be able to handle that pressure. Got to be physical and handle that pressure. Now you may be like, oh, he just lost the ball. You may say, "Oh, we just lost the ball." Nah, y'all high school, y'all high school players be doing the same thing. Some of some of y'all, not all of y'all, but some of y'all, if you you have struggle, trouble handling the ball, and be like, "No, nah, I just lost. It wasn't a defense." But as soon as they stepped up, that's when you lost the ball, because now you saw the pressure, you got scared, and you ain't know what to do. Your, your senses kicked in. Your, your fight fight or flight senses kicked in. You got scared. You lost the ball. That's what it is. So you gotta get better at handling the ball, even when the defender tries to come up and pressure you. You gotta you gotta bring it right back and tell and make sure that you're not reacting to their pressure, but they're reacting to you. So you gotta be able to change pace, move, have these different single basic moves, the tweens, behind the backs, crossovers, the basic ones, so you can get by and keep changing pace. And that's how it's gonna help you be able to handle that ball pressure. And all that stuff could be be prevented literally just by. Being more physical. Aside from the, the ball handling and the skill aspect of it, you can just be more physical. And you got it. Now here on this first one though, I want you to notice front or Mo. Mo points. Mo points to 35 right here. His the person he was guarding. Because he sees he sees Fultz on this mismatch right here, and Barnes is just trying to dribble down, get low to this corner, try to get a post up. Because you know, the lower you go, the more the closer you get to the basket, or the closer the lower you go to the baseline, closer you get to the basket. You're just playing angles, playing numbers at that point. But back to this, most pointed to to Franz and telling him get cover mine, cover two, because now he's gonna have to help Fultz on this post up, on this isolation. Tells him to cover him. So now Franz not has to cover for here. And he has to be prepared to get the rotation for the third pass. So say say Barnes say say Franz didn't let this happen and cover this middle. Say Franz covered that and didn't let him get this middle. It would have to be he he watches this. Bull plays two. Bull plays these two. He gets the first pass. Say he goes corner, Bull gets that. Goes wing, Paulo gets that. Then goes up top, Franz gets that. Or, or, it would be Kale who who rotates over. But now he just kind of played his man and try to play his eyes. But if you try to play your play the person you're guard the offensive player's eyes, you're gonna get deceived. That's how they be. That's how they trick you. They're gonna look somewhere, but then they're gonna be throwing it somewhere else because they really just seeing the whole floor. They're trying to get you out of position. Now he missed this, but still, that's too clean of a look to to give up. All 
All right, now for Franz to get that charge call right there, simple, simple. All he has to do to get that charge call right there is not do this right here. And literally not do this right here. Just put his head down and get back in position and not continue to just stare, at the, stare back at the ball. Instead, just sprint back down here and get yourself in a position where you can protect the rim. And now he tries to get stopped and tries to beat him, just move over a little bit to the spot and gets called for that block. So all, literally just by talking to the refs and chirping, he, he got called for the block, he, or he wasn't able to get back in time so he could get try to get that charge. Another pressure, 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 pressure right here. Now where he messed up right there, instead of trying to use your jabs and get, get through him, he dribbles back to get space. He dribbles backwards to get the space. That's one thing you do not want to do. Dribble backwards to get space. And now you see how he's not trying to get into the body. He's trying to just get around and get all around his defenders instead of trying to make contact and kind of get through part of them and cut off their angles. He's just trying to get around them. Now he ends up getting his dime, getting the foul. But in the long run, these plays are gonna these plays are gonna hurt you. It may it may work once once in a couple times, but to retreat dribble all the time and try to not make any contact, it's gonna hurt you. Make you worse as a ball handler too. And so that's the end of this video. Franz, literally just to get better, work on handling pressure. Handling pressure is the number one thing. Being able to actually be comfortable initiating the offense, initiating the plays. Paulo also has to do a better job, better job at that. But Paulo is a bigger frame, and he's able to take that contact a little better. So the pressure doesn't get to him too much. But still, there's some times where he sees a double and gets pressured. But Franz, as when he's a, that uh, that initiator, being more physical, being taking taking that challenge, setting the tone off the gate, letting your the, uh, defender know, no, you're no, you're not going to get under me. You're not going to pressure me this whole game. And you could do the same thing if you get pressured all, a lot, a lot, back court, front court doesn't matter. You got to let the defender know, I'm not going to back away from the pressure. Rather, I'm going to take it and use it against you. So if you try to pressure me up, I'm going to get by or I'm going to bring it back, create some space. So now you don't even want to step up. So you got this little things like that. He has to be physical enough to where the defender is uncomfortable with him being physical. And players like Luka, Harden, Trey Young, they're all so good at that because every time a defender tries to play him up, boom, they get by. So... They got to, you got to make sure that to stop these plays, to stop players from pressuring you, that you got to be a little more physical. You got to handle that pressure, control the pace, not let them speed you up. And so, yeah, that's that video. Another one coming tomorrow. We got the Boston-Brooklyn game. I'm about to do that. Do, watch that video today. Watch the game today. Upload that tomorrow. Before the video ends, subscribe, like, turn on those notifications. Follow on all socials, Pat D.O.R., and we out of here.